Hello everyone, welcome to another YouTube video of understanding Python. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about the introductory of Python and just understanding the basic concept, basic concepts of Python. So to understand the what is Python, we will To understand Python, Python is a computer programming language often used to build websites and software, automate tasks, and conduct data analysis. Um, Python's a very general purpose language as well as it can do a variety of things. It's user friendly, it's versatile, and it's one of the most common languages used in data, data science majors. <clears throat> So many programs perform some versions of the following basic process, such as inputting data, processing, and outputting. So with that said, um, as we all know, there are three types of um, concepts that we will be focusing in this video. One is data types, second is variables, and third is operators. Data types. So the first data type is called strings. A string is just basically a series of characters to describe text data. For instance, this would be print unt, that is a string, unt is a string. So if we run this, and we'll see right there, string unt. Um, another, another one would be print, let's do single quotes. I like banana. We'll run this one and we can see I like banana. So when strings is written out into a program, it is called string literal. In other words, in lame term, it's called hard coded. You'll hear professors or your colleagues say, hey, don't hard code stuff, meaning don't just write it down. You need to program it in order to output whatever you're looking for. And as I just showed you right now of strings, there are two types of string. Uh, one is a double, one, way, one, one is double quote, the other is a single quote. Um, these two will be, um, you can perform these two ways of, of writing strings, but it can get a little bit, it can get a little bit complex. Let me show you. So let's just say print, print, and we use single quote. And we wanna say, I'm going to ace this project. So I am going to, ace this project. And as you can see, it's Python is such a user friendly that it's already telling us that there's something wrong with this. So if we just print this one, we'll just execute the selection in Python console. And we can see, oh, look, see up right there, syntax error, invalid syntax. And it also displays where the error is, so that's very good. So in order to fix this, obviously, we're just gonna change this. And we're gonna say print, I, I am going to ace this class, and we will use double quotes. In, and obviously, this works out perfectly. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, or we could have just used an escape character in this case. So let's write that out. So print, I am, I am saying Harry Potter is incredible. 
and oops, let me fix that. All right, let's run this and we can see it. Perfect. So either you could use double quotes or an escape character. So let's do an exercise. Display your home address. Let's work on this exercise. So print. T. Kazi's address. I always like to use double quotes because I, I think it's more easy and convenient for me, but you could also use single quotes in this case. It's up to you. And that's your home address, right? Basically within this exercise is just understanding to use a print function, which is obviously to display your uh, variables and to display what you want the user to read, as well as working on strings. And there we go. As, as we understand that when we write our code, it can get very complicated. Sometimes it can be a long, complex, or even um, just in general, we, we don't understand what we're writing. So sometimes we need comments. Comments are a critical part of a well-written program. It doesn't affect the computer. It does not affect Python. It's only meant for us in order for us to understand what we are documenting and what we are writing throughout the code. So another data type is called variable. We use variables to all pieces of information. We can think as a variable as a data container, which is connected to a value. For instance, let's just say love, love is equal to I love you. So in this sense, love, love right here, would be considered a variable. The equal is obviously an operator, and I love you will be an expression, in this case, a string. Variables are created with assigned statements, which uses the op assignment operator. Now, within variables, we, we need to understand one thing, that there are something, there's something called tracing variable, meaning that the variable can change over time. So as we know, love is equal to I love you, we can say I miss you. So now what we know that love is equal to I love you is now overwritten by I miss you. So if we print love, what do you think we're gonna get? I love you or I miss you? Obviously we're gonna get I miss you. And let's write, run that. And that's what we have. So this is what tracing variable does. It, takes, it basically takes an old value is overwritten with the new assignment. So the old value is gone and the new value is in. So, Literals are hard coded and they cannot be changed. So uh, let me write let me write this down so it makes sense. And variables. Variables can be assigned and reassigned. 
So these two are very important to understand. Okay, um, so when we as when we're naming a variable, as we all know, every program, every language, have their have some particular naming rules to be followed. Python, we cannot use any keywords. So if you want to have the word, you know, use print, that's as as um, naming one of our variables, it is unacceptable. You cannot have that. We also cannot have um, any spaces when we want to name a variable. Um, the variables that are permissible to be, um, there are some rules we that are allowed and are permissible to naming variables are having lower or uppercase characters as well as underscores. We cannot have numbers in the beginning, but in the end of naming variables. So I will say, See, we cannot have print. If I want to say print von, it's already showing red, meaning that it's on it's unacceptable. All right. Um, we cannot have, let's say, assignment three. See, it's already showing you red, so we cannot have that. What we can do is assignment three is equal to. I don't know. Let's just say. Let's keep it a string, right? Assignment three is equal. I don't know. I don't know where it is. So assignment three is the variable name. And I don't know where it is, is the expression. So we should follow these Python uh, styles and rules for naming variables. So, okay. Other types of, of understanding data types is that they are float, integer, and string. We already went over string, so I'll just quickly go over the float and integer. So price, so price is equal to 167.89. Quantity in the market is equal to 200. And product name is equal to orange. Ready? So let's do this. So print type um, price. Just want to copy paste. Quantity market and this will show us the type function of these variables. And as we can see, it shows class float or price. Uh, for quantity market, it shows an integer and string, obviously, which we went over is showing you a string for product name. So um, another aspect of, of understanding the basic concepts of Python is reading the input. So another, as I was mentioning, another aspect of, of understanding Python is reading the input. So the input function simply is this, right? Input, it 
prompts a text that is an argument in the input function and reads that information, the data that has been entered from the user, and it returns that piece of data back into the program as a string. So I'll give you an example. Let's do this. So let's name it var variable is equal to the input prompt. All right. And let's say this input, we want to understand, let's just say input, the user's age already, all right? So let's do this. Get the user's age. So we'll do age is equal to input, enter, Enter your age. And then we want to display it, right? We want to show. So we'll do display print your 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 age is. Um, let's do this age. Alrighty, let's run this. Actually, let's just only run this. Yeah, right there, Enter age, let's say 20. It, and it shows us your age is 20. All right. Now we need to understand that every input function will always return a string value. So let's say, you know, as you just saw, this 20 is not really the integer 20. It is a string value of 20. So in order to, make that 20 into a number, we need to convert. There are multiple uh, conversion functions to be used and they're quite simple. Obviously, if you want to convert into integer, you would just have to display int expression. If you want to display a float, you'll use the conversion function of float and then the expression. So let's say int, right? Now we all know that this 20, is a string. So just to make it easy, we'll just type in int, input uh, parentheses, and ta-da, that's it, we're done. Oh, let me just comment that it's getting confused. Alrighty, let's run this again. Enter H, perfect. And I said this 20. This 20 is a string. It's not an integer. But when we use that int conversion factor, it will convert it into an integer. It may not look anything, you know, different. There's nothing different when we see from the uh, front end perspective but behind the scenes, it plays a big, big factor. So just remember that. So operators, 
calculation are represented using expressions. There are operators, which is operation to be performed. Those will be considered as addition, multiplication, division, and et cetera. Operands will be literals, variables, or other expressions. So I'll give an example. This will just be simple. All right, so addition, obviously seven plus seven will give us uh, 14. Subtraction would give us three minus two is equal to one. Multiple. Multiplication would give us well, four times two, going to give us eight. Division, just simple, would give us uh, seven divided by two, give us 3.5. Now, integer division, which is just something similar as division, if we do that, seven divided by two, it will only give us the three, which is because we want only the integer. So that's, so that's what integer division does, only gives us the integer remaining. You can take it as that. Obviously the remainder, or not, sorry, integer division won't give us the remainder, but it'll give us only the sort of whole real number of whatever the division we're dividing. That's integer division. And then the re remainder would be, remainder will be whatever is remaining, obviously, right? So seven remainder of two will be one. And exponent, would be two to so the exponent of eight, 256. So these are just simple um, math expressions that you should know. All right, so I think, so yes. So in this, hopefully within this understanding, you guys will understand the variables, data types, input functions, operators and expressions, as well as print function. You need to understand that these are just the basic concept, concepts of, uh, of um, Python basics and, we sh and you will be able to do very well as long as you keep practicing. And in order for you to do that, you'll just, finish off by one exercise, implementing the tip calculator. So, so hopefully you guys were able to do exercise. So a total amount would be, right, this is a float whatever the amount of bill is, the tip percentage will be the float. You use input as well as to calculate tip, you will total amount times the tip percentage. Then you divide that by 100. And as well, we are formatting it so that we want only to see after the decimal, the two numbers. So let's run this and see what we get. Oh, let's first enter each okay, as we did 20. Okay, enter your total bill, let's say 100. Tip percentage, I don't know, 0.5, and your tip is 0 0.5. Well, let's do this. I made it too simple, right? Oh, so yeah, so it's just only displaying how much tip we have to pay. So, yep, I hope that makes sense.
I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please subscribe and share. And please um, write down a comment if I if I need to work on anything. I'm I'm as well as a beginner. So whatever I'm learning, I hope you guys can learn from the same thing. And yeah, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please share, subscribe, and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.